Hey guys, Andy M. My friend, Chris Platt. This is time for me to take a rest of my voice to rest now because I've been struggling with the first half. Enough is my voice today. So Chris is going to do a short story. Yes, a short story. So we were taught about in the first half and a couple of poems. So take it away, my mate. Well, yeah, this is a short story called Escaped. The rain was falling heavily. It was like driving through a thick curtain of water. He eased off the accelerator a little. Had to be careful on wild nights like these. The last thing you'd want is to have an accident or to break down. You just wanted to be at home on these stormy nights. The thwack, thwack of the windscreen wipers was hypnotic. He stared out into the glow of the headlights. The rain sounded like white noise interference as it battered the car. He was reminded of the opening scenes of a Hitchcock film. Through the wash of the rain, he spotted a figure at the side of the road. The person wore a green parka and had their thumb jerked out. Why on earth would anyone be hitchhiking tonight? Surely you would just stay put until the morning. They must have been in a rush to get where they were going. He signalled down and pulled over. The hitchhiker climbed in. He shut the door quickly, glad to be out of the rain. He pulled his hood back and sighed. He was somewhere in his mid-twenties and had wild red hair and a thick beard. Awful night, eh? said the driver. The hitchhiker held his gaze for a long moment, drops of rainwater trickling down his face. Yes, he said. Yes, it is. The driver pulled out and continued through the storm. The hitcher glanced over his shoulder into the blackness behind them. You OK? The hitcher simply nodded. They drove on in silence for a short while. The BBC radio phone in blaring out from the car's speakers filled in for the conversation. They listened to the radio and their own thoughts as they moved on. Where are you headed? asked the driver. North, the hitcher pointed. Oh, are you travelling to see friends? Hmm. The driver couldn't tell if that was a yes or a no. He adjusted his tie nervously. The hitchhiker stared at him in the shirt and tie. The hitcher seemed scruffy in comparison in his park and his Pink Floyd T-shirt. Do you work around here? asked the hitcher. Yes, said the driver. I will stop late at the office. You know how it is. No, not really. Again, they drifted into silence. The talk radio show carried on as they drove through the wind and the rain. <clears throat> the hitcher shifted in his seat and stared out the windscreen. No music, the hitcher asked. What? Is there no music we could listen to? I like the talk radio shows. I'm not really a music fan. The hitcher's eyes glared over for a moment. Then he spoke. I like listening to music. It calms me down. The driver said nothing. Several miles later, there was a news bulletin on the radio. The, the reporter tried to remain as professional as she could as she read the announcement. We are getting reports that a patient has escaped from a Manchester psychiatric institution. The man is said to be psychopathic and to have a history of murder. The hitcher jabbed a finger on the button of the radio panel. Tinny pop music now blared out from the speakers. The driver stared at his passenger, his question and asked. I hate the news, the hitcher said. It's so depressing. It just brings me down. There's never any good news, is there? The driver didn't reply. Don't worry, I'm not the killer, said the hitcher, fidgeting with his coat. No, said the driver. I mean, no, no, of course you're not. They drove on, listened to the rubbish pop music and overexcited radio DJs, the rain pounding on the car. What do you do for a living? asked the driver. The hitcher was quiet for a moment, then he grinned. I'm a writer. Oh, really? How interesting. Have you had anything published? No, not as yet. I'm an undiscovered artist, said the hitcher. I'm sure you'll make it, though. What are you working on at the moment? asked the driver. I'm writing a novel, he said. Oh, yes. It's about a serial killer. The driver didn't speak. He flicked the tar radio station back on. A man was rambling on with himself about the change on the radio. The, a man was rambling on with himself about the changing days. The wheeler bins were emptied. Um, where can I drop you? Asked the driver. The hitcher said nothing. When the driver glanced round, the passenger had his eyes closed. He was either asleep or feigning slumber. They drove on through the storm down the snaking lanes. An hour later, the storm still growled and raged. The hitcher looked out of the window. The driver steered the car in silence. Another news bulletin came on the radio. We are getting more information on the escaped patient. 
The killer's name is Simon Hughes. He has escaped from Green Pastures Institute early this evening. He's extremely dangerous and completely unpredictable. Simon Hughes made his escape by changing from his hospital issue uniform into a suit and tie by pretending to be one of the medical staff. He stole a car and drove away. The hitcher turned to the driver. What did you say your name was? My name is Simon, said the driver. The hitcher stared in shock. Simon grinned. The headlights of a passing car glinted off the knife blade in Simon's hand. Thank you. You cheerful man. That's all I'm going to say. You cheerful man. Now, I have to ask, is that based on personal experience? <laughs> no, I am neither a hitchhiker or a serial killer. Yeah, I'm going to say nothing. Right? So, <laughs> well, I'm going to say that. Right? Well, let's just move on. Right? So, but seriously, where did your idea of that story come from? Well, it was all these hitchhiker, scary hitcher movies. It was a stormy night. Somebody's escaped from an institute. Like Halloween. Is it Halloween? Yeah. Halloween, where the month the madman escapes from the institute, and it's all. I'm thinking, what if it's not the 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 hitchhiker, the scruffy hitchhiker? What if it's the guy driving the car, the very presentable one, who's the actual monster? And that, and that, like I say, that's got a lot of attention. That one. Yeah, I see why as well. That's excellent, that mate. I'm going to make sure Amanda is aware of that later because I know, tell you now, Amanda's going to love that. Gory oh, bugger, that gory, disturbing bugger that she is. I love her, so. <laughs> so, right, mate, you're going to do what? Three poems for us as well? Yeah, I'm going to do uh, one short limerick and then two poems. Yeah, that's fine. Give us a limerick first, then, mate. Well, this one is, um, this came into my head when I first started going to Speakeasy in Charlton, and I've been dying to read it out, but not done it yet. Um, <clears throat> there once was a man from Eccles, Made up of all glasses and freckles. He thought he would die to give poetry a try. He just hopes nobody heckles. Thank you. <laughs> I like that, mate. I do. He's like, you've got that sort of dry wit about you, Chris. I always love like your work anyway, mate. Thank so you. That is most definitely you. So, right. Well, um, this, <laughs> well, this next one is, um, I got this idea for this next one from all these different names and things of people's names and how they sound like other things. So that gave me the idea for this one. This is what's in a name. <clears throat> Benny Fishery is sorting his will out. Helen Back has been through so much already. Ed Education has a master's degree from Oxford University. Warren Peace sends me these really long text messages, but Peter out has stopped texting after a while. And I didn't get a reply to my text to no avail. And Christianity, she goes to church every Sunday. And geriatric isn't as young as she used to be. Malnutrition should check his diet out. Terry Fide is scared of his own shadow. Victorious always plays to win. Alan Key is busy doing DIY this weekend. Philanthropy does a lot for his local area. Paul Light always says good morning. And Pat Icula likes things done a certain way. And another thing has something she would like to add. Thank you and good night. Oh, excellent, excellent again, mate. Tell us about that point. Where did the idea for that come from? Well, it's just, I think, just all these different, like, like for example, like, somebody, I think somebody who used the word beneficiary, I'm thinking, Benny Fishery, and I thought, that is brilliant, that, you know, just, uh, yeah, just yeah. all these people, they just, you know, just, maybe it's also from, like, the Naked Gun um, police squad thing, you know, and all, there's been a bank robbery and, they all have these different... Maybe Abbott and Costello as well with the who's on first kind of... You know, just all these people's names that could be misconstrued, so that give me the idea for that one. Yeah, I like that. I think it's really, really <laughs> clever. No, really, really clever stuff, mate, indeed. So, right, we're on to the big finale now. Well, I didn't realise it was big finale, but, uh, yeah, the last one... Or is it always the one with wet squib then, right? <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this last one is uh, called A Genuine Fake. Um, this guy comes up to me in the pub, asks if I'm into poetry. Yeah, I say, I dabble. He looks around to make sure nobody's listening. Do you want to buy a Dylan Thomas, he asks. Genuine, it's legit. Intrigued, I follow him outside into the pub car park where all the dodgy deals go down. He shows me the handwritten paper in a plastic wallet. I check out the document in the streetlight glow. And it's definitely legit, I ask. The guy nods. Guaranteed, mate. 
I hand over a fistful of cash and we part ways. He shuffles off into the night, disappearing into the shadows. The next night, I'm in the pub, proudly showing off my purchase, passing it around all my friends. Do you think it's authentic? The debate begins. It's studied, scrutinised, held up to the light, each swirl of handwriting looked at under a magnifying glass. Finally, someone says, oh yeah, it's genuine, all right. Wow, a genuine Dylan Thomas. My goodness, that's amazing, I say. Um, not quite, they reply. What you have here is a genuine Chris Platt. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that is really, really clever. Now, that's one, one that, unless you heard part one of his chat today, you may not get the initial gag on that. Oh, excellent, mate, that one. That's very, very do you find that one that says more... It's, a, it's also a crossover into stories, done it? It's real, that one. Really. There, 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 there is. There's, there's, I found, before I started writing poems, I was writing some of the story to be like a page long, and like people who read them, because I send them with family and friends as well, they would be like, oh, did you get it? Like, yeah, I didn't really understand it. Like, me neither. I just wrote the thing. But I find <laughs> sometimes it suits more a poem. If there's not, if, if you kind of just want to get a certain point or want to convey something, sometimes the poetry just nails it, you know. Oh, it does. It does definitely that one, mate. It's like it's, I think I tend to write a lot of flash fiction nowadays and they can be like page long short stories and they can have the same impact a poem does. But you know, I agree with you completely, mate. So, yeah. yeah. Excellent stuff, mate. Anyway, it's been a pleasure today, mate. So, I always, I'm, really looking, I'm looking forward to seeing you read a speakeasy in October. So yeah, and then I'll let I'll let's see what magical tricks you pull out this time. Definitely, mate. So thank you very much. <laughs> Bit of pleasure, mate. So hang around anyway. Do need a quick word you off the microphone anyway. But loved it, mate. Absolutely loved it, mate. So thank, thank you. Again, mate. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay, folks, that's it from the spoken label for another episode today. Thank you again, to my friend Chris Platt. As Don I've told Chris, I love AEW wrestling, so I'm going to use one of their paraphrases to wrap up with today. Uh, so, to quote Don Callis over at AEW Wrestling to wrap up with, stay safe and stay over, and we will see you all next time.